Another player interview on Locked On Pacers today as we're joined by Pacers Summer League forward slash center and now Orlando Magic forward slash center. Sammy Shittu, we get to a lot of discussion about the Pacers Summer League preseason, Aaron Neesmith, Benedict Mather, and more on today's Locked On Pacers podcast. You are Locked On Pacers, your daily Indiana Pacers podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome in to another edition of the Locked On Pacers podcast, where we, of course, talk about the Indiana Pacers, as always. My name's Tony East. I cover the team for Forbes and the West Side Community News. And today, second player interview of this August month, we will be joined by someone who played for the Pacers in Summer League last month, Simi Solashitu. Uh four-year pro now out of Vanderbilt a couple years ago. Really, really fun conversation. This one turned out to be really interesting because I wanted to talk to someone who played on the Summer League squad that just played just to talk about the experience, Summer League, Ronald Norad, Ben Matherin, the Neesmith trade, a bunch of stuff that happened in Vegas. And, and Shitu had a nice Summer League, so I reached out to, uh, to to get him on. And between me reaching out and the interview, he ended up signing with the Orlando Magic. So I had to ask him about what made Orlando the right fit for him. So after his experience with the Pacers, he's now on the Magic roster, or he will be for the preseason and camp and potentially the season. We talked about him trying to make that roster and finally land his first spot on a team at the pro level because he's played in summer league with the Grizzlies, two preseasons with the Bulls, but has yet to land on a team actually, despite having some pretty good skills, played in Israel uh, this past year before coming back to the States and playing with the Pacers in Summer League. If you don't remember Simi Shitu from Summer League, you should have watched all the games because he was one of only four Pacers to play in every game uh, out in Vegas with Gabe York, Andrew Nembard, and Kendall Brown. Uh, ended up averaging about five points and five rebounds and a block per game out there. And for their in their final game against the Phoenix Suns, was quite frankly their best player uh, in that game. Their best plus minus, 6.7 boards in that game, had some dominant stretches as a center, uh, and really showed off what, you know, the, the big bodied mobile center could be. The Pacers were really lacking that kind of player in the summer league context. But, you know, as a given his background, he fit in really well with the way the Pacers like to push the pace. We talked about Rick Carlisle's system in this interview. Uh, and Ronald Norad really helped ignite him into being uh, playing in the right role for him, which I thought was really interesting uh, as we talked about that as well. And I think Shimmy Shitsu, Shitsu's had a really interesting journey to this point. You know, he born, uh, over in London in England, uh, and then moved to Canada, then to the States, and you know, transferred out of a really loaded academy high school team at Montverde with R.J. Barrett and a bunch of other pros to Vermont. Uh, Five-star recruit, but ends up you know, tearing an ACL, shoulder injuries, going to a loaded Vanderbilt class with Darius Garland and Aaron Neesmith, who, again, we talked about in this episode. Like He's had quite the varied path before going undrafted. Uh, in that 2019 draft. So he's just been all, all over the map in his basketball journey in terms of countries, high schools. You know, it, it's pretty crazy. Actually, uh, I did a story on Forbes Sports you can read that should be out by the time this podcast is out. I actually talked to his high school coach uh, in Vermont about you know his time there when he kind of knew that Simi would be a, a good pro-level player because it's been a really interesting journey for him. And I thought his story to getting to this point and his time with the Pacers were both interesting. Uh, and I enjoyed talking to those guys. If you want to read that story, you can. Uh, but yeah, please enjoy this conversation with Simi Shitsu. Lots of Pacers-related topics, a couple magic topics as he's there, and a couple questions about his journey that I was interested in because, again, it's rare uh, that I get to have these sorts of conversations so candidly with players, and I like to to take full advantage of them. Before we bring on Simi, though, guys, I got to tell you guys about betonline.net, the fastest and easiest way to check in on all of your sports betting needs. You can find all the latest sports and events at the number one place for your odds online at betonline.net they have reviews and news of every league including major league baseball nfl nba nhl combat sports esports even golf all on betonline.net who continue to be the top online resource for all your sports wagering information live in-game betting scores and podcasts they've got you covered preseason lines are up colts preseason finale this sunday against tampa bay you betcha they've got it up tom brady playing uh unbelievably i believe his first preseason game will be in Lucas Oil against the Colts. They've got the lines up uh, for that game this coming weekend. Colts favored by five and a half. Uh, Three, it's down to three. It was five and a half yesterday. Thank God I checked. While I was talking, get that line at betonline.net. Head over to that website today or use your mobile device to learn more about the trends and the action over at betonline.net because betonline is where the game starts. Now let's bring in Orlando Magic and ex-pacer forward slash center, Simi Sola Shitu. 
All right, Simi, so this is your first normal off-season since, really, you came out of college in 2019 between the short COVID summers, two years in a row, and obviously the pre-Jeff process. How has that been for you, and how has that helped you as a player? Um, so for me, I feel like the, you know, the pre-Jeff process and everything, like, it was good for me just to kind of you know, learn the business more and just learn uh, basketball and also just learn, um, you know, what these scouts and GMs and everybody wants, you know. So I feel like at the end of the day, um, you know, I just you know I continue to make steps in the right direction and I continue just to get better each year and just continue to show that and, you know, my time will end up, uh, my time, I'll end up having my, my opportunity in uh, my time. One of those places you had that opportunity to kind of show your growth and skills was with the Pacers in Summer League this summer and had a bunch of moments where you as the Bully Ball Center were one of the highlights for that team. What were your kind of impressions of the Pacers this summer and what was it like playing for Coach Ronald Norad for those four games? It was great. Um, I feel like they you know, let us kind of play free and be, everyone kind of be themselves and, uh, on the offensive side. And then defensively, I feel like really got after it um, and I was able to kind of show – my versatility on defense and also, you know, how I can protect the paint as well. And uh, I just feel like it's a great organization in terms of just what they uh, bring to the table in terms of having young talent and, um, you know, a good coaching staff and a professional coaching staff. So, um, but yeah, Summer League was good and it, it kind of helped all of us. And I feel like I helped myself in terms of just being able to be myself and show who I am on both ends of the floor. So. You said it helped yourself, and you just signed with uh, the Orlando Magic, or reportedly are going to. Uh, how much do you feel like Summer League helped you in that way, and what made Orlando the right fit for you heading into this coming camp? Um, so I feel like for Summer League, it helped me because um, it kind of just put me back on the scene, uh, back on exposure because I was overseas this past year in Israel. So, um, you know, obviously people in, in America don't mean – know as much as going on over there but you know it's it's a it's a good league and a good competition but yeah i just feel like being back in uh the nba side and uh going to summer league and having you know just that exposure and um just being in front of the nba eyes again was good for me and uh kind of helped me uh you know just again just be be in front of the right people and then for orlando i just feel like you know i'm I'm excited i'm it's a good opportunity a young team rebuilding organization as well and um they're looking to win um and they're just you know just it's, it's a hungry team a little bunch of hungry guys and you know i feel like i'm a hungry guy as well and um you know i want it just as bad as anybody and i'm willing to do whatever it takes to win and i just feel like that's the culture they have over there and um decided to get over there and just get better and um you know take that next step rick carlisle's teams love to play fast play in transition run off of rebounds and that push down to the Pacers Summer League team. And I know that is kind of the way you like to play. How do you feel like that Pacers system was helpful for you and let you showcase your game a little bit in Vegas? Um, yeah, so in practice, they kind of just preach that, like, you know, if you can handle it, you can, you know, you know uh, make us get up the floor faster, just you know, do, do what you do and do what you do best. And, you know, I feel like I've been doing that my whole career uh, since high school, college, and uh, in the pros as well. And I just feel like, you know, they – again, preached that to us and made it known that you know, they want to play fast. And uh, it kind of helped me in terms of just getting the ball off the glass sometimes and uh, just going to showcase I can make a play off the bounce and off the wing and uh, just kind of just be around and be uh, be alert on both ends and just more just showcase, um, you know, my, my guard skills and things that I've also polished up and uh, been working on as well. You played with Aaron Neesmith at Vanderbilt, and then he ends up joining the Pacers halfway through your time in Summer League. What can you tell me about him, and how helpful for you was it to have that familiarity of another highly recruited college teammate with you in Vegas? Yeah, Aaron's like one of my brother, one of my brothers, and, uh, you know, he was a lottery pick, and he's he's had a lot of good moments in, uh, in Boston, and, you know, I just feel like Indiana's uh situation for him to really show who he can really be uh and if he can more be himself on the offensive end and uh just be and uh just you know um be himself and showcase what he needs to you know do in order to you know establish himself in the league which i know he will um and you know he's 
one of the best shooters I've played with, and I feel like, you know, at NBA level, he's going to have to, you know, do that. And uh, I feel like Indiana's really going to give him an opportunity to really show, show that and really uh, for him to get better at that as well. You had a big preseason game with the Bulls a few years ago, 13 points, I think, six rebounds. When you go into camp with a new team like Orlando or you're Aaron Neesmith and you're switching teams, how much can these preseason games help you kind of establish yourself, show what you can do, and show other teams how much you've improved from wherever you were the prior season? Yeah, so um, you know, I feel like that preseason game just really um, enhanced my confidence in terms of you know just reminding myself that you know, I, I'm i an NBA player, and I just feel like, you know, everything comes at the right time and the right situation. And um, But, yeah, it just, you know, helped me go into that year at Westchester as well and be at the top of my game and, uh, you know, just show my improvements. And then overseas and then this upcoming year, you know, I feel like preseason, you know, obviously it's preseason and, um, you know, start of the season and stuff like that. Everyone's still trying to learn and uh, get back into things. But, you know, at the end of the day, like, it's a game and you know people are playing everyone's playing hard and I feel like you know just going to camp now is just you know I'm going in my fourth year and I just feel like even though I'm 22 years old I feel like you know I'm I'm getting that experience now and I'm really you know just trying to trying to figure out things and things trying to slow down for me um on both ends and I just want to continue to improve on that and show that and uh you know just prove that you know I'm I'm ready and um, I'm ready to take, to take that jump to that next step. Going from Vandy, now in your you know third different franchise at the pro level, mm-hmm. also spent a year overseas. What kind of motivates you to keep going through this journey where you've had so many stops to continue to try to, to show what you can do along the way? Um, just, you know, my faith, my faith in God and uh, his plans for me and also just, um, you know, there's always going to be highs and lows in the season of your career and I just feel like, you know, I've had my highs, I've had, you know, lows, and I've just, I've learned from those lows, and, um, you know, everyone has to go through them at some point, and I just feel like I've, I've handled it the best way I can, and uh, just continue to, and I just feel like continuing to move forward and continue just to get better and work, uh, work on your craft and your mind, well, everything will, you know, come at the right time and when you're ready, um, and just more, just, you know, I've, I've seen glimpses of it, I've, when I've been out there uh, in the G League training camps and all that stuff like that and overseas as well. And, you know, I just I just feel like, you know, I'm continuing to improve and get better and I'm still young and I just know, you know, my time's coming uh, when it's supposed to come. You spent a lot of this Pacers summer league playing on a team with the Pacers' highest draft pick in three decades in Benedict Matherin. What stood out to you about him, his skills, and the way he carry, the way he's able to carry himself as a younger player in this league? Oh, Ben can really play. Uh, he's he's confident, and you know he's he's an NBA ready body. I feel, and you know uh, he can he can see his uh, prove he can shoot it consistently. And he's he's he was hitting a lot of big shots in uh, summer league as well. And uh, no, he's he, he can play. And I feel like for for the Pacers, like he's gonna come in and um, come in and really help them on uh, both ends, uh, offense and defensively. And you know just give them you know that that scoring uh that young scoring two two three guy that can you know really help a franchise you went from the the five-star recruit that crazy class with Neesmith and Garland at Vanderbilt through your NBA journey to now what have you kind of learned about yourself throughout that whole process of going from high recruit to today um so I'm resilient uh, I feel like um you know I I showed I showed uh showed it at in college I feel, um, and then and in, in obviously in G League and you know NBA level and stuff like that I've shown it shown it as well and you know obviously certain cards don't um, fall the right way or anything like that but at the end of the day like I feel like I've just continued to grow from it I've gotten better each year which is the only thing that matters right now just me getting better. Um, and just continue to work, and uh, you know, I feel like you know, at the end of the day, like you know, I, I've, I'm ha- I'm so happy for my guys like Darius, who's you know in a great situation in Cleveland, and Aaron, who's uh, in a good situation as well in Indiana, and you know, 
uh, even Shaman Lee as well and Matt Ryan. Uh, he also was with the Celtics as well. Um, but all my peers, well, I just feel like, you know, that I, I, I appreciate my journey and, you know, at the end of the day, it's just it's still being written and it's, I feel like it's just the beginning right now. Um, and at the end of the day, I just feel like my time's going to come at the right time and, you know, and I just know this year is going to be uh, a big year for me and, uh, just, you know, take that next step. You talk about this coming here being key for that next step, getting your opportunity. What are you hoping to accomplish with Orlando or wherever this season takes you? What are your goals for this upcoming 22-23 season? Well, my goal is just to really just win and uh, get better. Uh, winning will take care of everything else uh, and just control what I can control and um, and just get better, um, just be in the gym as much as possible and um, just work on my game and, you know, in the G League and uh, training camp, preseason and during the season. Um, so, but yeah, just getting better and just winning games and uh, control what I can control and, you know, obviously building that uh, chemistry with my teammates as well and, you know, just find it, finding, you know, that right, the right step we need to take forward. Do you feel like the Pacers and, and Ronald Norad and those other coaches they had for you guys in Summer League will help you on the way to reaching those goals this year? Uh, for sure. I feel like, you know, we over there, they uh, we really preach team and they really preach that uh, at the beginning of training camp as well. Just if we win and, you know, everyone plays together, kind of every, everything else that, you know, we can't control will take care of itself. So uh, just that mentality um, and then just um, you know, at the end of the day, they said play together and you're just, you know, everyone's going to be themselves at the end of the day and just to be yourself and have fun because, you know, it's, it's a game. So, uh, but all those things and they, they, they really preach that. And I, I feel like all organizations in the league probably preach that as well. So, um, but just going in with that mentality and just being, you know, hungry and, uh, ready to play. Do you have anyone or any player in the league that you really lean on for guidance or for, for leadership when you're going through your experience and journey? Um, a couple of my friends uh, in the league um, that you know, I talk to them, but you know, and they they have their they have their own stuff also going on. But you know, we we we, we definitely uh, try to connect as much as possible, and you know, I'll. I was, yeah, they have questions for me and I have questions for them. And, you know, I kind of, you know, uh, we all help each other at the end of the day. That is the full interview. Thank you, everybody who's made it this far for listening to the whole thing. And thank you to Simi for the time. Much appreciated. I would like to once again say that I have a, a column with this and quotes uh, from his high school coach, uh, one of his high school coaches, excuse me, at Vermont, uh, up on Forbes Sports, if you want to read more about that. And if you want to hear more about Simi Shatu potentially and the Orlando Magic, Locked On Magic is your place to go, the power of the Locked On Podcast Network. We've got these stories, we've got these teams covered everywhere locally, which I absolutely love about this podcast network. Uh, next week on this show, last week of the month of August. So uh, going to wind down on the not five days a week. Next week will be the last week of the offseason that we're not going to do five days a week. Only four next week, and then after Labor Day, boom, we're back to every day here on Locked On Pacers, which will be exciting. So next week, I want to talk about one more what if, just to have another history lesson. I know a lot of people have enjoyed those. Uh, and then another player will join us to talk more about the Pacers as a whole. This player does not have any Pacer ties, uh, but was in the NBA for a long time, a former top pick. We'll talk about Rick Carlisle, uh, what it's like to be a top pick, how it applies to Ben Mather and things like that. Uh, so that will be really, really fun. Uh, talk a little bit about when the Pacers might next make the playoffs with their roster, uh, Tyrese Halliburton, how players fit with him to close out this month of August. And then we'll pivot into September when training camp starts up, preseason games on the horizon, and we can really dig into player previews, what to watch for for each player this season. So a lot of fun stuff still to come on Lockdown Patient. I think there's a chance for one more player interview even later after the one next week. Uh, we'll see how, how coordination ends up working out there. But, um, yeah, really exciting stuff here coming on Lockdown Patients. Thank you guys a ton for listening to this interview with Simi Solashitu. Again, thank you to him. For the time and everybody, thank you for listening. Have a good one and we will see you tomorrow.